We review a lot of websites, whether they're from freelancers, web design agencies, or people offering services, even small businesses. And the most common mistake a lot of them make is that they don't think about how their landing page or homepage is actually a sales funnel. This is your sales page. No matter how much you want to think of it not being that, it actually is. You could have a website about gardening and you just do blog articles. You're selling the benefit of your website, your blog, your articles. You want people to come along, subscribe maybe. So what you put on your landing page or your homepage is vitally important. Now in this video, I'm going to go through an example homepage and you can get a copy of this for free. You can go over to the link and you can download this and use it with Elementor or just take inspiration from it. There's no need to sign up, share your name, email, nothing like that. You can get this completely for free. Let's have a look at it. I have intentionally not put in a proper logo or images so that you can use this wireframe, populate with your own content and of course feel free to modify if you want. The hero banner is massively important and whether you have images or not is slightly down to you and your brand and what you're getting across. But what I really want you to focus on is the impact headline, the subheader or extra text you might have and the call to action button. Let's focus on the headline, open the door to more clients and soaring sales. You could argue that open the door is a little bit negligible. I could have put unlock the door or whatever. That's up to you. But the two key aspects of that headline are more clients and soaring sales. So if you're a business or a company or a web designer or you're selling furniture or you're an accountant and you're new or you just want to expand, you probably want more clients. I'm telling you that if we work together, I can help you on that journey. And ultimately, what does more clients lead to? Well, sales, right? And rather than me saying and conversions and more profit, soaring sales. Make that connection. Use a powerful word. Use things that make me go, oh, I like the sound of that. Now let's move on to the subheading. And we are now going to reinforce what we've said in the impact headline. Perfect for entrepreneurs and businesses seeking growth. Elevate your appeal with tailored websites that make you irresistible to your ideal clients. Look at the wording there, perfect for entrepreneurs and businesses. Well, that's basically nearly everyone, right? Freelancers, agencies, accountants, anyone who are seeking growth. I've already said more clients, soaring sales, growth, right? But I'm reinforcing it, but I'm not using the same words. I've just tweaked it a little bit. Elevate your appeal. Again, I'm speaking to you. You just don't want to get sales. You want to become well known. You want to become the accountant everybody goes to. You want to be the person everyone buys their furniture from. Now I'm telling you more about the services and how we're going to get there. Tailored websites. I could easily say open the door to more clients and then I don't really tell you what I do. And then you find out later on, hey, I do SEO. I'm going to get you onto page one of Google. Well, maybe you're thinking, I haven't even got a website. Do you do websites? No, no, I don't do websites. I just do SEO. Well, I wish I'd known that before I'd continued and contacted you or it wasn't clear enough. And the word tailored, custom, bespoke, we're going to work with you. You know when you're going to get a suit, you can either buy a suit from a shop or you get a tailored suit. It's like it's made for you to fit, to work for you, to do what you want it to do which is usually just wear a suit, but you get the idea. And then I'm rounding off with make you irresistible, make you popular, make you the go-to expert. And then I've said ideal customers. We've already mentioned the word clients and now I've said ideal customers. So I've made sure I've not repeated the word clients twice. I've covered off quite a bit there and we're only on the hero banner. And then we move on to the call to action, which is let's get started rather than contact me, see more, read more, let's get started. And when you click that, it takes you down to how we work together. That's bypassed a bit, so we're going to scroll back up. But having call to action buttons to actually lead somewhere, and if you can get them to lead you to somewhere else on the page rather than take you to no other page, it means that you get to reveal the story. Because in a way, your home page, your landing page needs to be telling me a story. You need to be revealing to me who do you want to work with? I mean, I haven't told you my name yet. I mean, you probably might get that from the logo or the company name, but I haven't told you everything about me. But I'm telling you a bit about what I can do for you. There's the story. There's the intro. 
I want to work with these people. This is what I do, tailored websites, and this is what we're going to achieve on the journey. And if that's making sense, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget, you can download this template for free by clicking the link. And if you want to learn how to build a website with Elementor or how to start a web design business, go to the link as well. And we have got courses there. But hey, you can get this for free. The next section below could be images of example websites, logos you've created, maybe pictures of you with customers or clients. You could even put testimonials up there. Not always a good idea straight away, you know, right at the top of your page in your hero banner area. But you could also put down images or logos of companies you worked with as well. You could even have it auto scrolling. We've got videos and tips on how to do that. But what you really want to get through on your hero banner when I land, who are the ideal clients that you want to work with and what are you going to do for them? Let's scroll down to another important container because at the moment I might have gained your interest. You might have scrolled down. But now I've got to hook you in with a bit more about the storytelling. So what you really want to do is focus on the problem or the pain. We've mentioned that I know you want to get more clients, but what is stopping you at the moment? Why are you not getting clients? What is your problem? Is it because you're not putting yourself out there on social media or you haven't got a website or you've not thought it through? So now I'm speaking to you. Say goodbye to the struggle of attracting clients. Doesn't that connect with everything we've just said above? As a business owner, you might feel overwhelmed in the crowded digital landscape, finding it tough to capture the attention your unique offerings deserve. Hey, you can reword that, but I'm trying to speak to you. I'm trying to say, hey, look, you're struggling here and I get it. I get you. I understand. And after the problem, show the solution. Show what they're going to be feeling if they work with you. Overcome disappointment with a website that speaks directly to your clients, showcases your brand and converts visits into business relationships. It's a load of buzzwords, but it's how you weave them together to create a connection. The next section is all about how we work together. So I'm now giving them a bit more about the process. At the moment, I haven't really told you all about our services. I'm just trying to build trust between you and me. So now I've told you about what we might achieve. I've addressed the problems and the possible solution and feeling you're going to get. But now I want to go into how are we going to work together? So I'm telling you about our discovery discussions, our researching of the content and actually building the website. And I haven't overblown it with too much detail. I haven't given you a complicated flow chart. I'm just stating really simply, if we work together, this is the process. Because I want to build a partnership up with you. I want you to know that it's not just going to be me doing the work. It's a bit of you as well. So this is how we have to sit down, have a meeting of some sort, and we need to discuss it. We need to find out about what exactly do you need so we can give you a tailored strategy to solve it. This is very overlooked on many websites, and I don't just mean web design. Maybe there's someone who creates chairs, and they've got a website with loads of pictures of their chairs. But nowhere on their home page or nearly any page, they actually talk about the process. So what, do I just contact them and they build a chair? Do they come to my house and measure it? Is it done via video or virtual meeting? Do I have to go to them to start looking at different types of fabric or leather? What is the process? So if you can give them a snippet of what it's going to be like working together, I might look at it and go, yeah, I like that. But if you were to go and say, well, the process is going to be 20 steps, I might look at it and go, that's quite convoluted. So what you're doing is reassuring me that, hey, I like the way this person works. I'm on board with this. The next section after that is where we can again reveal more images of us and clients, websites we've created, companies, logos, things like that. You might say, well, aren't you repeating what you already did up here? Yeah, but isn't it about reinforcing? Maybe you only put two or three images above. Have you got anything more to showcase? Now, one important point. Don't go showcasing images of anything you're not proud of. Put stuff on there that you're willing to share. Look, we've built over 300 websites in our lifetime. There's a good portion of them I will never share. Why? Because I'm not really happy with them. That's down to what the client specifically wanted, even though I was like, I don't really think we should do that. So only showcase websites that you are happy to show up or you would use as a reference if someone asked you for one. Now, if we just scroll back up again, we do have choose your package. You click that and it's going to take you down to website packages. And I'm only showing you three at the moment. You may have five or six services. You're most likely going to have another services page. You might have SEO services. You might have analytics. You might have logo design, brand design creating the content, whether you use AI or not. 
You can save all of that for your separate services page. But I really would recommend that you focus on three core services. If you have too much, and then I might start to question, how much of an expert are you in this? Especially if you're a one person team, like maybe you're the only web designer in your team. You're the only accountant. You're the only dentist. Do you really know all of that stuff? Or are you just trying to attract customers from every available market? Now, one of my strategies for when you do your free course services is think of a pricing ladder. Start with your basic service and it's going to be a relative basic price. And then you want to go up a notch and then you want to go up again. And ideally, the one in the middle is your preferred option. You will have seen this on so many websites. They might have a ribbon that says popular. Or they might have a statement that say this is our popular package. But what you're really identifying is what is the preferred option? That doesn't mean you don't want them to get package one and package three. That's OK as well. But you prefer them to go for package two. Package one is your most basic package. This could be a turnkey solution where you offer a template. You want a website. We're going to get it done for you within a day. And basically, you'll have like three or four templates that you've already gone and built out. There might be up to five pages, home, about, services, portfolio and contact or something like that or a gallery page. And if someone purchases that and that's what they pay, five pages, you swap out the content in terms of the wording, the logo and the images. The layout stays as it is. There's no customization of that. If they want to go and customize it because they might get a login to do that, that's up to them. You will notice, though, it does say SEO optional. So if they decide they want to think about search engine optimization, that is separate. There's a separate cost for that. And when we do the full blown proposal, you'll make that clear to them. So 999, that's what you get. You want the SEO? There's a bit more. You want me to add on an extra page? There's a bit more. You want me to do a little bit different like a menu option or an off canvas menu that pops in? That's a bit more, okay? So what you're telling them is this is what you get as package number one. But it is really vitally important that any upsells you leave separate. If you start to bung everything into package one and then the client goes, I don't want all of that, you're now going to have to start going, well, we'll have to reduce the price by X, Y, Z. And also you've removed the capacity for you to do any upsell. Now, this is not dodgy dealing. This is not sleazy sales tactics. This is the reality of what you buy. You know that if you go to buy a computer or a smartphone or anything, you have the basic model. You want more gig on it, you pay more. You want more memory or you want more storage or you want extra USB-C ports on it, you go and pay more. That's the reality of life. Now let's look at package two. The SEO is still optional and the price has gone up to 4999. That's pretty high, right? But that's because it's a fully custom package. You might still use a template from package one, but now you're really customizing it out. Is it justified to jump the price up like that? Well, yeah, it's no longer a one day. It could take longer. Maybe it takes two weeks to build. Well, then the price will go up. This 4999 is not the be all end all price. This is the baseline price and the price could go up the more customized we make it. I mean, come on, if someone says they want to throw in like 50 different plugins and features galore, you're not just going to charge 499 for it, are you? But the idea behind this is that I'm letting you know the basic solution. And then I'm also know, letting you know of the premium option. Now, some people are afraid of this because they kind of go, my clients and customers are not going to go for this. Well, are they the customers and clients you want? I mean, did you come here to only start building websites for $500 or $1,000 and that's it? Are you going to do the whole appointment booking WooCommerce shop website for a thousand? If you are and that's what you want to get, that's entirely OK. I have no problem with that. We've all had to start somewhere. We all started building WooCommerce websites for two hundred dollars, right? Come on, we've all been there. But now we charge more because we believe in ourselves, And also we're letting the clients know this is what the price is going to be. If you want to attract premium clients, you've got to up your prices. Because they're not going to come to you if you were to start charging 999 as your baseline for everything. And then suddenly you go, yeah, that's going to be $10,000. They might walk away and go, well, hold on. How did we go from 999 to 10,000? Whereas now I'm starting at roughly $5,000. Now what about package three? Well, this is now more of a shop e-commerce website and the price is almost doubled up. Again, I'm letting you know, you want a shop website and you come to me. Don't expect me to build it for 
by $1,000. It's not happening. I've made crystal clear what my pricing is. An area that not everyone agrees with is the revelation of the prices. Do I have to put that there? I don't know about you, but if I go to any website and someone is offering me services like gardening or whatever, and there is no idea of pricing, or they've shown me case studies like we built this garden for someone down the road or whatever, but even then they haven't told me the price. I understand that every website, every garden, every building that is built, the prices are kind of tailored towards the solution of what was built. But if you're going to show me that you went and designed that garden or you built this extravagant website, why can't you tell me the price? Or why can't you tell me the range? You know, if you don't want to tell me the price, you could say this website or something built like this was between five to ten thousand dollars. So I know because I don't want to contact you. I really like the look of that website. Yeah, it's about fifty thousand. What? Where did we go from to get that price? So it's okay to reveal a little bit because it helps to build trust. The next section below is where I'm now going to tell you a bit about me. So this is where now you go and reveal some further info and you might have a photo of yourself up there. You can rearrange this. And I'm also sharing some feedback as well. You could you put Google reviews in there, testimonials, however you want to do it. But it's really important you try and collect reviews and testimonials from people as soon as possible. My strategy at the end of every web design or every service you provide is just drop an email and let the people know, the client, the customer, that you just want to get feedback. What you're not saying is you've got to give me a positive review. You've got to give me five stars. Go over there and rate me. No, I want to get some positive feed. No, it's not positive feedback. Wrong word. I want to get some feedback and let them know that it's OK for them to suggest any improvements or any areas that you could have done differently because you want to know you take everything on board and everything they share with you will be taken seriously. Give them the confidence to be honest in their review. And then what you put here doesn't have to be everything they say. I've had people send in a review which is really, really long and it's all really good, but they're really detailed with their review. I only put on the bits I need to. It's OK to paraphrase. Have you never read a book or anything and then just take a bit of a quote and stick it on? So you don't have to put the whole thing on. I've seen some websites where they've put on huge reviews because they think it's really good. Not really. I want to scan and skim through your website. I don't want to be sat there reading line for line for line of your review. Just give me the key points. This section reveals two important things. And by the way, if you want to split them out into separate sections, go ahead. The first thing is going to start telling you a bit more about me or the business and how I overcome or beat obstacles. How have I been feeling? What do I like to work with? What is my strategy? And you don't have to go too in depth into this. But what I'm trying to reveal to you is that I get it. I know what I'm talking about. And the feedback over here or the testimonials is all about building trust. So even though a lot of people, again, overlook these or they stick it on a completely separate page, is vital with building a connection, especially if someone's come to your website and they don't know you. They don't really know your business. They're scoping around. Do I really want to work with this person? Build trust. And of course, you'll have an area for a contact form and methods of them contacting you. I strongly recommend you put your social sharing icons or social media links in here. One thing I've noticed with a lot of businesses is that they don't always utilize social media. Now, you don't have to be massively active. But if you are claiming to be a very well-known designer or a furniture maker or an accountant, and you don't really have like a Facebook profile for your business, maybe, or you're not using LinkedIn or anything like that, then how can I really form a connection with you? Because this other person has do, is doing all of that. And I can go in and I can actually see what they randomly or regularly post out. Maybe if there's a video of them I can go and watch. I can get a feel for do I really want to work with them? Why am I just going to contact you on the fly? So again, building trust is massively important. Now, this website wasn't massively overpopulated, but can you see some of the strategies with where I'm trying to tell you the kind of people I want to work with? I understand the problems you're having and I really want to help you. And this is what you're going to achieve. This is the end goal. This is the aim. And if you start to think about your homepage like a funnel, a sales strategy page, you have got a higher chance of forming a connection and letting the visitor or the user know that this is what we're going to do for you. And hey, if you want to get a copy of this, 
go and click the link and download because you can get this for free. Hey, I'd love to read your comments. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon.